This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about how Bitcoin is breaking out again, as well as some other bullish Bitcoin news that I'm sure you'll want to know. If you're interested in learning how to make money in both bull and bear markets, or you just want to see what I'm trading or investing in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So as you know, we've had a nice run up in Bitcoin. It's been trading sideways for a few days, but what's really significant now is that we are seeing another breakout from this sideways motion. We had sort of a typical flag formation here and we're breaking out to the upside, which is extremely bullish. Now, this seems to be a mainly a Bitcoin phenomenon. If we look at Bitcoin Cash, for example, which is a, uh, a hard fork from Bitcoin that's sort of a dead project, we can see how it is, it's not breaking out at all. It's completely dead in the water. Same for BSV, which is another fork, uh, XRP, USD. So we can see that this is mainly confined to Bitcoin. Even ETH is not uh, doesn't have the same sort of same sort of chart, and it makes sense simply because we're seeing so much uh, institutional uh, or moves toward institutional adoption of Bitcoin. The other thing that we've been noticing. And it started last week and has really been continuing. It was especially uh, it was especially visible yesterday when stocks were down sharply. Bitcoin was really holding quite well in terms of relative strength. It was able to hold the 1300 level, and that's one reason I think that it's it's so strong today as stocks are rebounding. I'm expecting stocks to continue to be strong, irrespective of who wins the election in a week from now. I'm expecting a big breakout in stocks as well, and I think Bitcoin. Will, will lead even more when that happens. But this decoupling we've been seeing between Bitcoin and stocks is especially interesting. This is a chart of various assets since the beginning of October. The red is obviously Bitcoin up almost 24 and a, a little more than 24 and a half percent on the month. ETH, Ethereum up 12.76 percent. And then equities are basically flat. Down here we can see the SPY and the QQQ up approximately 1.34% and 0.95%. So this is quite significant simply because Bitcoin and stocks had been very uh, coupled and moving together, uh, highly correlated for most of this year. And now we're seeing something very interesting where Bitcoin is really assuming a leadership role. And I think that's extremely bullish, especially given where we are. A lot of people have this this idea that, that 20,000 is this magical level uh, on charts, that's where Bitcoin peaked in 2017. And it is an important level, but I think a more important level is to look at these monthly closes. The significance of a monthly close is that's where buyers and sellers are willing to close out the month and take out their position, take home their position, and especially market to the books. Uh, if you're, especially if you're an institutional investor, a hedge fund trader or something like that, you have quarterly reports and monthly reports. And so I think it's very significant. Right now we're trading at 13,413. The previous, the previous monthly closing high on Bitcoin happened in December 2017, and it was 13,880. So we are on track for the second highest monthly close in Bitcoin's history, and possibly the highest, the higher, um, the highest close in Bitcoin's history, the highest monthly close. All we need to rally is uh, $400 from here which Bitcoin could do in a wink of an eye. This is an area that has previously met a lot of resistance. We, as we've talked about, we can see these long tails here where sellers forced the price back down, uh, especially in, uh, in early 2019. We are now uh, seeing uh, that being sort of undone and we're trading really near all-time monthly highs. This makes sense. There's more and more institutional flows coming. There's literally a wall of money coming toward Bitcoin. A lot of people are sort of price anchoring and fixated on when Bitcoin was 10,000, but things have completely changed now that, that now that PayPal is going to allow custody of uh, cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin. Now that Square and MicroStrategy uh, have been buying Bitcoin and lots of other institutional investors like Paul Tudor Jones, things have really changed. seems like every day we get a new, uh, a new piece of news. This is the latest that I thought was amazing. Uh, a lot of people especially in the US and Europe, maybe you haven't heard of, of DBS, but it is uh, South, Southeast Asia's largest bank by assets. And they are now setting up a digital assets trading platform, which will uh, obviously include Bitcoin. They, they had a, a webpage that they accidentally posted and then took it down 
but it looks like this is going to be trading for uh, for institutional investors as well as uh, yeah it looks like it looks like it's uh, probably probably mostly for institutional investors maybe some some uh, retail investors but that that remains to be seen either way everyone is getting in on this game now that PayPal has made the move now that Square has made the move uh, you can be sure that every bank in the US every bank in Europe every bank in Asia is looking how to move into Bitcoin and we can see this happening I already talked about this article a couple of days ago but it really uh, it's really quite interesting to see JP Morgan flip. Even just a couple of years ago, Jamie Dimon was calling a uh, calling Bitcoin a fraud, and he's saying he was going to fire anyone from the bank he caught trading it. Now JP Morgan is completely on board. At least uh, a certain team of analysts there is completely on board, uh, saying that Bitcoin is probably going to double or triple from here. I think they're being too conservative, but they do point out something interesting, which is that, and I've been pointing this out for a while to the gold bugs on my channel, older uh, older co cohorts, older demographics, prefer gold as a store of value, while millennials and Gen Z certainly prefer tokens, online, things like Bitcoin as an alternative currency and possibly as a store of value. So you can ask any kid or teenager about gold, probably have no interest in gold, but they're definitely interested in their various online uh, digital native tokens and Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin as well. So this is this is quite uh, quite encouraging to see the big research shops putting out very bullish things on Bitcoin saying it could double or triple from here, which would take us up to about uh, from about 26,000 to call it uh, 40,000. I personally think we're going to be at 100,000 uh, by next summer, or certainly by the end of next year, possibly possibly a lot sooner. Finally, I uh, wanted to link to a nice, uh, a nice thread that points out that we're now five months past the halving, the Bitcoin halving, which happened in May 2020. We're really encountering a supply shortage here of Bitcoin simply because the miners are producing half as many Bitcoin as they used to. And this is roughly the same point in the cycle where in 2016, the bull market really took off. And I think this is an interesting interesting thread for those who are not aware of these supply and demand dynamics to sort of, uh, sort of work through. And it's, it really is the perfect storm for Bitcoin, having the halving and then having all this institutional demand come online. So uh, you, you rarely see a chart as good as this. This is just a great looking chart. Finally, wanted to share a resource I've shared before, but some of you have been asking about. People are always asking, well, what's my Bitcoin worth? If I put it on a hardware wallet, will the price change? These sort of things. Well, Bitcoin is just like having a, if you hold it on a hardware wallet, it's like having a gold coin or a bar of gold under your bed, something like that, where it's worth whatever you can sell it for when you want to sell it. And presumably you uh, don't want to sell it for a while. But this is a chart of uh, how much Bitcoin trades for in various parts of the world. And it's really interesting in Nigeria, where obviously the, the local currency is a bit of a disaster. Uh, Bitcoin's trading for 16,373 right now. South Africa, it's at 13,858. So Bitcoin is hitting new highs already in various parts of, uh, of the world. Still around, uh, I guess the global average price is roughly 13,004. 93. Now, especially countries that have very weak currencies or debasing their currencies faster than we are debasing the U.S. dollar, they will see these kind of flows as people seek out a digital safe haven. So the key levels I'll be watching, I'll be watching this monthly chart, seeing where we, ch we close October. And it'll be very, very interesting to see, I guess, uh, we'll, we, will know, we will know this weekend whether we have a new uh, all-time closing high in Bitcoin. Either way, extremely bullish, as you know. And uh, for those of you who feel like you've missed out, I feel like we're completely at the beginning here. This is, uh, you still have this huge opportunity to front run Bitcoin and the giant, giant rally, which is uh, coming in the coming months, the next 12 to 18 months, I think are going to be absolutely amazing. And people are going to be fairly disoriented by them, especially when they see Bitcoin trading at 20,000 and 30,000 and 40,000. There's going to be sort of a sense of unreality around it. Uh, just as there was when we saw Tesla go from uh, pre-split prices of call it 300 or 400 into the thousands before it split. 
uh, the human brain's not not always the best set up for dealing with with these sort of exponential functions, but Bitcoin is definitely an exponential function, and there's such a shortage of Bitcoin in the world, especially especially free floating Bitcoin that hasn't been locked up by hardcore Bitcoiners, and as such, what we're really going to see is the mother of all. Uh, I don't want to call it short squeezes, but basically the mother of all rallies, simply because there's so much. Uh, so much demand for Bitcoin coming online and so little supply. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.